Eddard, the House Stark, Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North, sentence you to die. Eddard Stark is one of the most recognizable characters in Game of Thrones, despite appearing in the show for only one season. He is renowned for his honor, strength and bravery. He was a loyal companion to his friend and king Robert Baratheon, a distinguished soldier and a great lord of the north. However, none of these character traits prevented him from getting his head chopped off. On the contrary, some of these character traits might even have sped up the events that led to Ned's head chopping. Had he played the Game of Thrones correctly, he might still be the one chopping heads instead of getting his own head chopped off. So what does playing the game even mean? Playing the game is an abstract concept of doing whatever is necessary to elevate your position in a certain area, most notably in business and politics. Playing the game is famously portrayed in George Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire book series and more or less notably, depending on who you're speaking to, in the hit HBO TV series Game of Thrones. Now since I didn't read the books yet, I'm going to talk about the events that took place in the show. Playing the game is mostly based on pretending. That's why it's called playing. While playing the game in terms of business is somewhat benign and involves a lot of relationship building and watching what you say and do, the game in terms of politics is a brutal game to say the least. This was especially true in the Middle Ages. I mean, just look at history. Almost every king, queen, duke, general, emperor, prince, baron, lord, tsar, khan, sultan, shah, kaiser, caesar, jarl, pharaoh had to deal with some kind of uprising and usurping of their throne. This is depicted brilliantly and to great detail in the show, with plotting, murder and betrayal. How brutal the game was is summed up nicely in a quote that's admittedly become a bit stale, but not untrue. When you play the Game of Thrones you win, or you die. There is no middle ground. Ned obviously didn't plan his moves correctly, since he got choppy chopped by Sir Elin Payne in the neck. Boy, Game of Thrones sure has a lot of head chopping. But why didn't Ned Stark play the Game of Thrones? Ned Stark was an honorable man. His stubbornness in upholding his own code of honor was what killed him. He refused to take part in anything that didn't adhere to his strict principles. Lord Stark refused to play dirty, and rightly so. It was against his character to kill Cersei and her children. Moreover, it was immoral. However, by getting involved in what is essentially a dirty game and not playing dirty, he caused more mayhem than he could have ever imagined. Good old Uncle Ned's involvement in the Game of Thrones and his refusal to play the game correctly indirectly caused the War of the Five Kings, his family being lost, held hostage or dead, his best friend's death, his own death, and leaving the kingdom in the hands of a spoiled teenager. Whoa, what? Are you saying Ned should have done evil deeds to accomplish his goals? No, stop antagonizing me. Stop antagonizing me! I'm saying he should have either stuck to his principles and not get involved in the game from the start, or played the game. Let's take a look at what Ned's motivations might have been. He could have either wanted the safety of his family and a peaceful life, or to do justice in King's Landing by helping Robert out. He was naive to think he could do both, as getting involved in the politics of King's Landing surely won't guarantee peace in his life. His problem was that he wasn't willing to face the consequences that come with choosing one of these goals. He tried to do both. Let's take a look at his first option, not getting involved. Ned had several chances to go back home, even without losing his honor. He could have said no to Robert when he was asked to become Hand of the King. It was obvious that Robert had no intention of being a good king and was more interested in mating, eating and drinking. I'm not trying to honor you. I'm trying to get you to run my kingdom while I eat, drink and haul my way to an early grave. Also, Ned was fully aware of the fact that being Hand of the King was going to be a dangerous job, but we can't blame Ned for this one, since Robert was his close friend and naturally he wanted to help him out. He could have said no to Robert after he and Cersei wanted to kill Sansa's direwolf lady. Surprisingly, despite his loyalty to his family, he gave in to the demands and killed Sansa's direwolf, who was by all accounts a good doggy. Ned had every right to side with his family and to refuse to kill Lady, in which case he'd probably have a big fight with Robert and they'd break up. He'd get out of being hand and he would have preserved his honor because he would have been defending his family. He did say no to Robert after he refused to take part in the assassination of Daenerys. He resigned his position and had the intention of leaving for Winterfell. But Ned couldn't resist Robert and his rosy cheeks. He withdrew his resignation, 
once again putting himself in harm's way. All of these situations gave him an opportunity to leave King's Landing and to return home with his family, thus saving his life and the lives of thousands of people in Westeros. However, Ned didn't want to give up. He wanted to do a good job as Hand of the King and was worried how he would be perceived if he left Robert. But looking at what he accomplished, or didn't accomplish, he didn't really do a good job. If Ned cared so much about justice and the good of the realm, he would have played the Game of Thrones, which would include but not be limited to not trusting Littlefinger, however seductive his accent may be. Always keep your foes confused. If they don't know who you are or what you want, they can't know what you plan to do next. Not going along with his wife's kidnapping of Tyrion, because if he believed in justice, he'd give Tyrion the benefit of the doubt or at least give him a fair trial. Not telling Cersei that he knew about her doing squats in Jaime's cucumber patch. Informing Stannis about Joffrey being a bastard. 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 Accepting Renly's... <clears throat> help with capturing Cersei and her children. Sending his kids home when he knew there was gonna be trouble. Accepting Joffrey Star as his king or queen, building trust and ruling his regent. And then revealing his bastardity. Bastardness. Bastardry. After which he could exile him and Cersei, heck even send him to the wall, he could have used the physical exercise. So Ned made three key mistakes. He assumed other people adhered to the same moral code as he did. He thought Littlefinger's promise was trustworthy. I did warn you not to trust me. Which was stupid since Littlefinger told him he had a thing for his wife and hates even his dead family members. Perhaps you chose the wrong man to duel with. Well, it wasn't the man that I chose, my lord. It was Catelyn Tully. A woman worth fighting for, I'm sure you'll agree. He revealed his plans to everyone. Another naive move, considering that he knew Cersei was diabolical enough to plant three bastard kids to his best friend. Sure, he was worried about Robert's favorite pastime, child murder. What madness led you to tell the Queen you had learned the truth about Joffrey's birth? The madness of mercy. But he had enough power to capture them and have them escorted to Casterly Rock, where they would have been safe, after which he could tell Robert everything. He was inconsistent and cared much more for external validation than his own family's honor. Ned cared more about justice for who sits on an uncomfortable and sharp chair than the fact that his kids' direwolves were getting punished for no good reason. Is this your command? Your grace? It's easy to consider Ned an idiot for making all these errors, but hindsight is 2020, and we all make mistakes. Take me for an example. I'm an idiot. And I've gotten my head chopped off at work more times than Cersei took sips of wine during the entire show. I said more than I should have. I told my secrets to the wrong people. I stubbornly insisted on doing what's right. I made enemies. I didn't remain neutral and I wasn't on good terms with everyone. I have changed my game a bit and tried to keep my mouth shut. What I found is that choosing your words carefully makes you less susceptible to getting your head chopped off. In a business sense. Playing the game doesn't mean kissing up to people. It means growing your influence by building relationships so you can move up on the ladder. Of course, don't overdo it or you'll be a kiss ass and no one likes a kiss ass. Then, once you're on top, you can make changes for the better and make work easier for everyone else. There's a bit of Ned Stark in every one of us. We've all had experiences where we stuck to some made-up principle instead of playing the game. Unlike the Game of Thrones where people die, you can play the game of work guilt-free and climb up the ladder. If you're interested in more videos about historical or fictional characters and what we can learn from them, please leave a comment below with your suggestion. Also, remember to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.